weekend is going to be my last weekend with Life Church. Oh. Yeah, I, I believe that God is calling you, calling me into a new season of, of uh, my growth in my life and my walk with Him. And uh, so I will definitely miss all you guys and miss all the good times that we had and, and all the praise and worship and everything. And that I just want to let y'all know that God has good things in store for me and He has good things in store for you as well. And I pray for every one of us that God will and he will supply all that we need. And I just wanted to thank everyone who's had an impact here on my life. I appreciate all of you guys. And uh, I hope that in some way I have impacted your life for the better in Christ. And, and I just uh, thank you guys, and I wish you the best going forward. Well, not that that is, is uh, uh, going to be able to follow such a heartfelt expression of love and care, but uh, I did want to give you an opportunity to let you know uh, we're going to be doing something together that's hopefully a little loving and caring one for another. And uh, so my wife could share this, so I'm just going to have to... Or you could have the person that was originally doing the announcement. Is that you? Uh, I thought she was. I thought she was giving me a break today because uh, you want to tell us about what's going on in you. Okay. Being healed. I had my procedure on Thursday. It's good to go. You guys. Okay. B and B. October twenty sixth. Breakfast and boasting. In the Lord, not just, you know, in cute earrings and shoes. Okay, what's your favorite breakfast food item to bake or buy? Write it on the sign-up sheet, bring it up to share. Children will be joining us in lieu of Children's Church, so count on everyone. I can't see, like, half that. You want to catch the other half, Pastor Steve? I can't, because I'm the speaker, and I'm, like, four feet tall. Would you like to boast on the goodness of God? We would enjoy hearing your testimony of how either he saved you or something marvelous that he's done in your life. Uh, four sharers are requested to sign up. If we have more, it doesn't say that, but if we have more, we're certainly welcome. So uh, the, the sheet is right there. We can start that right now, Lindsay. And just sign up on there. So if you want to share something, then sign up there in the share category. And that is an opportunity for you to either share something God's done in your life, share your personal testimony, or like she did, she just shared a little bit about uh, her having procedure and doing so well today, but I'm sure that she'd like to share in more detail. Oh, y'all don't want to hear details about that. <laughs> <it. laughs> or something like okay. some of the things you've explained about hmm? Christian, other things that you've done in your life, that God's done in your life, that have been something that would encourage us. Yes, there's a test in every testimony. That just sounds awesome. I love hearing testimony, so more the merrier. I mean, not like it's all about me, you know what I mean. Is that right? <laughs> hmm? Yes. Okay. Praise by Teresa and prayer on Wednesdays at 5. You're awesome. If you would like to revisit or share with someone else in our Sunday morning worship or sermon, please visit our Live Church of Jacksonville Facebook page. It's doing great. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your hard work. It's really reaching a lot of people. So, anyway, okay. But, I'm sorry. Was that it? Am I rambling? No. Okay. All right. It's great to be back. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. So as that goes around, just go ahead and uh, sign up for something. Uh, like I think Mary said on there, you can buy something. You don't have to. You don't have to make something. You know what we do? We just kind of like make extra the night before. In this case, try having breakfast for dinner, mm -hmm. and then just make an extra pan of it and bring it the next day. So you're like, I ate my breakfast for dinner. I won't be eating it tomorrow for breakfast. I'll be eating somebody else's breakfast. But so you don't have to fix something. You just fix two of whatever it is you want for dinner, Amen. even if it is breakfast. Is that confusing? <laughs> no? And then you save a pan and bring it in the morning. That's what I do. Saves my, my, my morning from being uh, stressed out. And I can still bring breakfast. <laughs> or if you want to 
buy something on them. That'd be great too. So either old way. How many like to eat? Yeah. <laughs> and so if you don't think that anybody else likes to eat what you eat, you just bring what it is you like to eat. And I bet there'll be somebody else that'll like to eat it too. All right. Uh, last week we were uh, we were kind of scratching the surface on on uh, what Jesus said about hell. And I told you we'd be continuing that, but I really felt like I needed to go back up and do a little bit of digging here to, to set some things straight because there are a lot of gaps in between things. You know, as Christians, a lot of times we think that other people have a very clear understanding of what it is that we're clear about. And to be frank, sometimes the idea of, of what happens when people die, it, to me, I thought it was very clear. I thought everybody knows what happens when they die. But you know what? I found out that is so not true. Amen. That a lot of people just don't really have a good foundation, even this a scriptural foundation, much less a very a, a clue about what happens when they die. Now you talk to the to the unbeliever and, and they have no clue hardly at all about what happens when they die. Which is kind of sad because this isn't one of those things you want to learn by experience. Amen. You, want to, you want to have a heads up Amen. on what's going on Amen. before you get there, don't you? Yes. Let me tell you a story. My wife, I, you know, when we first got married, uh, uh, she, went, she, she took me out on what was called a mystery date. You, you ever have a mystery date? Not, not a date where the person showing up is a mystery to you. But you don't know where you're going before you get there, and you kind of, the other person's kind of decided what all kind of things you're going to do and everything. So she decided to have a mystery date. Well, it didn't go out so well. Some things didn't turn out, you know, as, as she planned. So from now on, anytime we go somewhere, she always wants to know where we're going. <laughs> so where are we going? Well, I want it to be a surprise. I don't want to be a surprise. <laughs> I want to know where we're going. Is that? So true. All right. And it, it's kind of disappointing to me because I want to try something new and different. And then in a split second, she'll say, I don't like that. I was like, well, at least when we have a surprise, I can have a chance of taking you somewhere ah. we try something different and new. Mm -hmm. Any old way. The idea is she doesn't like a surprise. She doesn't like a mystery about it. And you know what the funny thing is? The Bible is very clear about what happens when people die. Yes. And I think that we should all be well acquainted with what, what we're doing, where we're going. And then we should be able to share this. In fact... The scripture says, I'm going to ask you to turn to a, a passage in Thessalonians. Be 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. So you can start turning there. It's kind of open up to this. But the idea here is that uh, I, don't, I, I don't want to be surprised. Uh, I don't want to be unsure about where I'm going or what's going on or, or what I'm doing. I want to know confidently. And I want to be able to share that confidence with other people about what happens when I die. What happens when they die. So this is really uh, uncomfortable. I mean, in some ways, none of us want to talk about death. I understand that because if I was to ask you how many in this room have your will all up to date, you know, it might be a little embarrassing to see not many people have it all up to date and have their, have their stuff ready because it's one of those things we do put off. But at the same time, this is so hopeful, so encouraging from God's Word and perspective that I would like for us to be um, what the Bible says is comforted, comforted Amen. with these words. Amen. Amen. Not yes. afraid, yes. not concerned, not anxious, comforted with these words. And then I think, now I'm just thinking out loud, but I'm thinking that if we were able to be comforted with those words, maybe we could share that comfort with someone else. Somebody who is anxious. Somebody who doesn't understand what, what life's all about. Amen? Amen. All right, so the funny thing is that most unbelievers really don't know where they're going when they die. And we're going to probably take this a little slow and easy as we go through uh, some of this stuff because there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of presumptions about what happens when a person dies and then how we can go through it according to what Jesus said and see some things about how we can bring this hope, this encouragement, or what the scriptures call comfort to others. Now, we talked last week a little bit about the fact that uh, both believers and unbelievers continue to live after the death of their body. Mm -hmm. yes. Both believers and unbelievers continue yes. to live yes. beyond the death of their body. And
And uh, there is an exception to this. And uh, sometimes when you, when you bring in an exception, you bring confusion. And I don't want to bring confusion. I just want to give it to you the way the scriptures say. That there, are, there is an exception to this. And um, we're going to talk about that a little bit in, uh, in Thessalonians. And so let's go over to the fourth chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter. And we're going to start, I think, at the 16th verse. Mm, no, actually, we're going to go to 13. First of all, um, we're going to have to cover some, some, uh, some words. One of those words is called sleep. What is that? It sounds like the ice cream. <laughs> it's the like angels. angels. Is he <laughs> with a good humor bar? <laughs> but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to cover a a uh, a word called sleep. Now you may have seen this. I think uh, Claire touched on it a couple weeks ago when she was sharing uh, in communion. You remember that word coming up there? For this cause, many of you sleep, right? Uh, now, so we're gonna we're gonna get all of our terms together. Some of the terms that we that, that, that need to be clarified, one of those is sleep. All right. We're going to see it here in this verse. It says in verse 13, but I do not want you, I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay, stop there. Because if the Bible says that it doesn't want you to be ignorant, or in this case, that Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant, is it possible that a lot of people are? Yes. Yes. Is that why he's saying, I don't yes. want you to be ignorant? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people who don't really have a clear understanding about these things. So he wants to clear up the misunderstandings. Now, if they had misunderstandings, I know my kids always make me think like they're the smartest generation they ever walked the face of the earth. You know? That because they they got an iPad and an iPhone, like I don't have one and I don't know how to use one. Like they created it. They just use it just like I do. I don't know why they take credit for this stuff. But nonetheless. They're like, we're the smartest people on the face of the planet. You people don't know nothing. And these Bible people, they weren't very smart either. They, now, since then, we've got the iPad, the iPhone, and all this technology. Oh, Listen, you only build on what your forefathers left for you. Amen. We weren't no dummies. <laughs> we ain't no dummies. <laughs> so here, those people were smart, just like we are smart. But they didn't have some understanding according to the revelation that Paul was given. And he says here, I don't want you to be ignorant because that's what happens when we try to think things through ourselves and we try to make sense of it. He says, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, there's that word, fallen asleep. All right, let's continue on. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Okay, so there are people who think that life ends at death had no hope. Nothing beyond that. Zero. Nothing exists beyond this life. He says, I don't want you to sorrow like those who have no hope. A, have no hope for themselves. B, have no hope for others. In other words, if a person that you love has passed away, isn't it wonderful and comforting to know that you'll see them again? Amen. That's hope, right? That's hope that the, the loss that you're experiencing at this moment isn't permanent. But temporal, that brings hope, right? Yeah. Now, if we both, and he's talking about believers as he continues on here. So as believers, we shouldn't have that, that sense that we will never see that person again, or that, that, that our, our, our affections for that person will never be again realized. And that, let's see what Paul says. He says, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. There's that word sleep again. But, but did you notice it says God will bring with him, right? As in Claire and Leonard are sitting here with each other on the front row, right? They're together. So in this case, it says God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So now we start to get a little understanding about this sleep in Jesus. 
that sleep in Jesus are people who have departed their bodies through death. They've departed their bodies, but they themselves, according to this, are with God. It, isn't that what it said? It says here, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him, because that's where they're, they're together right now, and he will bring with him the spirit or the essence that is the, the real person you are. The real person you are is not the person we see seated, although the real person is inside of the body we see seated right here in this room. You are not your body any more than on my clothes. My clothes might say Ralph Lauren. <laughs> I'm not Ralph Lauren, right? Because that's just my clothes. Likewise, when your body, when you leave your body, that's not your identity left in the, in, in the casket or, or the grave or, or the chair or wherever it is. That, that's just the clothing. As a designer, as we try to make it, that's not you. All right? Now, granted, it will become a very intricate and eternal part of you, which we'll see coming up. But right now, it is nothing more than a, than a means through which you're able to inhabit and express yourself on planet Earth. But it is not you. All right, so he says, for uh, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him, that's where they are right now, those who sleep in Jesus. So this, this term sleep, we need to understand it as when a believer's spirit has departed their body, that their body is sleep. Not in the sense that like you sleep at night, but in the sense that it will be awakened. Yes. It, your body will be awakened. Let, I know I'd like to jump to the end of the story right now, and so would you, but it's not, we're not, it's not time yet. Let's read on. It says, For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. All right. So our, our key word to understand here was first, asleep. The reason that I, that I, that I want to cover this is because if you ask the average person, they might say something similar to they believe in something called a soul sleep. And that is a, a prevalent thought, that, that, that your soul literally enters some sort of a cryo state, like, mm -hmm. you know, when it, a suspension upon death. And that it will be revived by the Lord. Didn't we just read right up above here, it says that the saints who are asleep will come with God. So where are they now? Well, their spirit is with God. Their body is asleep. All right? Now, your soul and your spirit go everywhere together. They don't split places and go places different. Your soul and your spirit are with the Lord, even while your body remains in the grave. Now, there's some interesting things you might want to look at. Uh, according to 2 Corinthians uh, 5 8, just make a note of it. It says, Paul, Paul's speaking about this, this choice, this, this, this great choice. He says, I want to go and be with the Lord. But it's needful for you that I, that I stay. <clears throat> and then one of the things that he says that is so uh, different from the average approach about death and life is that he says being absent from the body is being present at home rather with the Lord. He says I'd rather be at home with the Lord. Did anyone write that down? 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians 5. Please write it down so you can refer to it later. He says I'd rather be at home with the Lord. 
Now, and that being absent, if, you'll, if you can cross-reference that, there's a uh, James 2.26, and he says that as the body, how many of you remember faith without works? James, James. Well, first let me ask you this. Do you remember James telling you that faith without works is dead? Yes. Do you remember the other part of the verse? Probably not. <laughs> as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. So he makes this parallel that gives to us some insight that obviously the early church was very aware of, which is that the body without the spirit is dead. So it's the spirit of your spirit that is expressing and is living. This body is just simply the outward expression or the, the mechanism through which my spirit is now communicating to me. I think that's awesome. I'm spiritually communicating with you. I don't have to be in some psychic meeting. I'm spiritually communicating with you. And if you talk to me, you're spiritually communicating with me. Yeah. In the natural. But I am a spirit, and I'm communicating with you. And when you communicate with me, you're a spirit communicating with me. We're experiencing spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Soul sleep. That is not a scriptural position. The scriptural position is that as I am in, let me, I, I think I said it best here in my notes, so I want to get to the right one. First, of all, let me tell you a quick something. When I was uh, when I was a kid, I didn't I, I did okay in school. My son is a lot like me. He studies for nothing and gets a B or a C, and that he's happy with that. You know, he's happy with a B or a C, and he studies never. Maybe that he's in college, maybe that's changed. But in every other you know level of school, he just he just didn't study. Well, I failed one class, and I failed it because. I didn't show up often enough. I took extended lunch times. I think <laughs> I stayed over at the Pizza Hut too long. Or I just hung out with friends, listened to music, come back when I pleased. Find later on, I failed the class, you know. Why? Not because I didn't do well. Because I was only 19 days, you were allowed to not to be there, and I exceeded that. <laughs> so I failed the class. But can I tell you something? You say, what does that have to do with anything? I was absent from the class, right? I was absent from the class. Did I cease to exist because I was absent? <laughs> no, I can tell you I was existing over at Pizza Hut or at my friend's house listening to Stairway to Heaven backwards, just trying to hear all the stuff that they said was said. If I had turned the record player backwards in just the right place, I could hear some secret subliminal thing being said on the record player. I don't know. I tried it. That was how I spent my 19 days out of social studies or American history. Okay. I didn't show up for that. But I was absent from American history, but I can assure you, I was still alive. <laughs> Likewise, you can be absent from your body, and you're still alive. Right? Being absent from your body does not mean that you've stopped existing. Amen. Any more than I was absent from class and stopped existing because I was absent. That's where Paul comes in saying, be absent from the body and to be present or at home.